Have you ever been discouraged? Tell the truth now. Have you ever been discouraged? I have. When you are laboring for the cause of Jesus Christ and you're fighting spiritual battles, one of the great target zones that the enemy aims at is in this subject of discouragement. You can't serve God, you can't lead properly, you can't preach properly if underneath you're totally discouraged or discouraged or battling the blues, call it what you will. You know, there came a moment in the history of Israel where they had never been this way before. Moses died at the end of Deuteronomy into Joshua, and now Joshua uh, became his successor. And in Joshua chapter 1, verse uh, 7 through 9, we read this. Be strong and very courageous, the Lord said to Joshua. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded it? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I mean, maybe we need to say that every morning when we get up. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. That means we can be weak and discouraged. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you everywhere you go. Amazing. These were the first words, and they're repeated in that chapter. Keep the word of God in your heart, in your mind, and be strong and courageous. Don't give in to fear. Don't give in to discouragement. That can be fear of people, fear of the board, fear of uh, that your sermon won't come out good, fear of whatever. And don't be discouraged, the wearing down of life. That's what... Joshua was challenged by the Lord as he began his ministry of leadership uh, of all the people of Israel. You know, what the enemy sometimes tries to do is, is a one-punch a one knockout. Just boom, on the sweet spot on your jaw and you're out. Some sensational fall or terrible thing that he wants to navigate us into. But... More likely with leaders, although everything's possible, it's the constant pressure of just leaning on you. You know, have somebody in a church uh, just lean on another person. Just lean on them. See, I'm like I'm leaning on this table. Okay? Now, this table is very strong, so I'm leaning on it. It means nothing. Table's not going anywhere. But if you lean on a person, the pressure you exert on them, they have to exert muscles. Just in the back, I'm not going, going to be pushed over. And you keep that up hour after hour. How about day after day, week after week, month after month? Just financial pressures, preaching pressures, family pressures. And what the enemy tries to do is navigate us into a place of fatigue where we can easily get discouraged. How can you be bold and brave, which every leader has to be, if you're secretly discouraged inside. How many times traveling around the country and the world have people over a cup of coffee uh, said to me, Pastor, let me just tell you some of the truth. You know, I'm just defeated inside. I'm preaching. I have to put on a happy face for the congregation. Praise God. God is on the throne. But inside, mm, I am discouraged. And then they tell me why. And I try to encourage them. Boy, do we need the ministry of encouragement in our churches. Remember Barnabas? He was called son of encouragement. He later traveled with Paul on his first missionary journey, but he started out as being known as someone who was a liberal giver and someone who just encouraged folks. Oh, like send them God by the thousands in our churches. Because everybody needs encouragement. Everyone needs it. 
Notice the command of God. This is a command, like don't steal, don't lie, don't be afraid, don't be discouraged. How few of us take that serious? Well, I'm down today, and we almost brag on it, like I'm down. We might as well just whistle for the enemy, like, Satan, come and get me. I'm discouraged. I'm, I'm easy prey. Well, the Lord says, don't be afraid, and don't, don't be discouraged. And some of the best of us can fall prey to it. Am I not correct? How about this? The might, one of the mightiest prophets in the Old Testament, Elijah. Now Ahab told Jezebel, his lovely wife, everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. Now there's, a, there's something great to pray. You know, I might not be in God's will. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. Wow. Elijah got to the place of no mas, no mas. Can't take it. It's amazing, too, because here was the guy who faced Ahab, King Ahab. Uh, it's not going to rain again except by my word. God had sent him with that message. And then he stood up against all the prophets of Baal on the mountain. You know that story. And now one lady sends a message, I'm going to kill you. And he goes, I can't take it, and runs. It goes to show you can be strong in certain situations, and in another moment be very weak and get discouraged, and now he wants to die. He wants to die. So notice, by the way, that he ate some food that the angel prepared for him. And that means, you know, diet many times has a lot to do physiologically with how we get discouraged, more of that in a moment. But it also is a symbol, of course, of the food we need to eat, you know? You, you just sit down and shut everything off out of your life and stay in the Word for a couple hours and just to talk to the Lord. It's amazing how discouragement heads out of town. The other thing was he slept. You know, a late friend of mine who was a great Bible teacher said, Jim, remember this. Sometimes God's perfect will is to take a nap. <laughs> That's wild, right? Like when you're counseling someone, you know, here's the word of the Lord to you. Take a nap. Go to your room. Take a nap. Why is that true? Because when we run around too much and we get run down, you know, there's nerves can play a part in getting discouraged. Not eating right, not sleeping enough. I call it this. I learned this a long time ago. It's run around, run down, run away syndrome. Run around, having no wisdom. I've been there. No, I didn't have the wisdom of a slug. And I'm running around, traveling, doing favors for people, trying to do this, that, writing books, doing this, that. Then you, you, you run down. You run around, now you run down. And now you're susceptible to like, why don't you just quit? Your time is up. You served your generation. Dude, you're 31 years old. You can't quit now. That's the way it happens. You run around, you run down, and then you're tempted to run away. That's why it's so important to have Monday services. What's a Monday service? I try to have them. I give out a lot on Sunday. How about you? I'm giving out, giving out, people are listening, I'm giving out, I'm giving out. Now, now, who pours into me? Don't say, well, just, you know, stay in the Word. I mentioned that that's an important thing. But that's not what we tell our people. We don't tell our people, don't come in here, anyone preach, don't listen to the choir sing, don't worship with anybody, just, just stay at home and, and read the Word. Well, if they can't do that, we can't do that. So the question is, who speaks into my life? Who feeds me? I'm in so many services and sometimes traveling uh, a lot. So now I have to ask God for wisdom. 
what especially books am I going to read or listen, uh, watch videos? Who's going to speak into my life to build me up? Or else I'm going to run around, run down, and I'll want to run away. You know, here's another one tip I want to give you here before I close this episode up about avoiding discouragement. Never get too high, never get too low. I learned that playing basketball in college. We'd win a big game at Madison Square Garden, beat St. John's, beat UConn at UConn. That was a tough game. I played at the University of Rhode Island. The coach would come in. We're all smashing the lockers, screaming, yelling. The coach would go, okay, everybody quiet. That was a great win. But you know what? Three days from now, we got to go up to UMass and Amherst and play Massachusetts. We got to be ready. We got to practice. So great win, but don't get crazy because there's another game coming. Sometimes you'd lose a, oh, talk about a dagger. Some guy hits a shot he has no business making and you lose by one in overtime. And now you're just pounding the lockers and you're just so upset. Coach would come in. All right, hey guys, stop, stop, stop. All right, you're, you're down, you're discouraged, and all of that, but guess what? We gotta travel and play another game three nights from now. We gotta be ready for that team. We gotta be ready for that team. It looks like an easy game, but if we're not ready, we, we're gonna lose. I've extrapolated that to mean never get too high. No matter how good your sermon was, trust me, you can preach better. No matter how good the meeting seemed, Trust me, the congregation, all of us, we still need the Lord. you got to come back again. There is no moment that is the answer. Jesus is the answer. And we have to walk daily with him. So never get too high. Oh, we had a breakthrough. Good, we had a breakthrough. Then there's more breakthroughs that we need. Never get too low. No matter how bad things seem to be going, no matter how difficult the preaching is, God is doing something behind the scenes. I've seen that over and over again. It's never as bad as it seems. God is still on the throne. So come on, let's be encouraged. If you're discouraged today, I want to encourage you. I don't know who you are, but in the name of the Lord, be encouraged. It's always too soon to quit. That's trite, but how about this one? God who be, has begun a good work in us, he is going to complete it. The one who called you into the ministry, is he going to drop you now? He won't. He'll be with you to the end. Praise the Lord for that.